And then you guys ended up doing the and one mixtape tour, yeah, which took off and went viral before things went viral as well. Did that, that happen by our, accident or is that a marketing plan or no, that wasn't our idea. And actually, here's a really interesting analogy to coaching. Our first two games, uh, first two games of the year, we went three and oh. My one of my assistants, he said, Hey, we have a kid in our team named Safan Triplett. Safan's a six foot junior guard, elite athlete and elite off offensive rebounder. And he said, Hey, why don't we um, change our defensive transition rules for Safan? Anytime the shot goes up, let's just tell him to go get it, go get an offensive rebound. And he has no defensive transition responsibility other than the back tip. And I was like, huh, oh, that's an interesting idea. Like usually we're very structured, you know, the, the wings are back. You know, if you're in the paint, you can go offensive rebound and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, that's an interesting idea. So I think we won our second and third game in our opening tournament because Safan had two or three putbacks in each game. And my point there is the idea did not come from me. I wasn't like beholden to what I thought, you know, like this is the right way to do it. Because I said, so my assistant had a great idea you know, also named Corey, Corey Jacobson. And I was like, uh, great, that sounds, you know, let's think about it. Yeah, let's do that, awesome. The idea for the mixtape tour didn't come from within our company. It came from a 25 year old kid who was working at our ad agency, outsourced company. We had um, taped uh, the Rucker tournament. We had sponsored the Rucker tournament. And uh, in that one game, there was Ray Ferrosson, Ali Mo, um, Kareem Reed, uh, which is known as the best cast secret. Um, I mean, just Conrad McRae, a bunch of great basketball players, some of who went on to play professionally. And he said, you should take this tape and a and bunch of this basketball and put it to music and, and give the tapes away. And we were like, well, I'm, like, I'm from New York. I'm like, what's so unique about this is basketball. He said, no, people outside New York and outside some of the cities will have not seen this type of basketball and you should spread this love. So we did, and we, we literally gave away 50,000 tapes in a foot action promotion. We, with the tapes landed on a Friday, and all you had to do was try on a pair of Van One shoes, and you got a free tape. And by Monday, the tapes were all gone nationwide. It was the single fastest promotion foot action ever had. And then an event operator came to us and said, I think we can make this into a tour. A TV production company came to us and said, I think we can make this into a TV show. The coolest thing about it, though, was that like um, there were somewhere between 15 and 20 guys who had a, a, a different type of professional basketball opportunity than they would not have had if, if M1 Mixtape hadn't existed, the tour hadn't existed. So we enabled guys to have a different kind of career than they otherwise would have had. So that was really cool. Um, you know, the events were really cool. Fans loved the events. We kept the prices reasonable so lots of people could come to our games. It was really cool. I, I was in Santa Monica when we were having an event. The game started at four. I'm not a morning guy. So I told my head of PR, I'd call her when I woke up. So I wake up at like 11 and I'm like, hey, I'll, I'll be down, you know, there around one or two. And she was like, no, you probably need to get here by noon. And this is an out, outdoor game in Santa Monica courts. Um, and uh, I was like, why? She's like, well, the fire marshal let us know that we're about to be shut down for new people coming in into the court in, in the area because we're, over, we're gonna be over code. I'm like, well, the game's not for five hours. She was like, yep, you better get here the next hour or I can't get you in. Wow. <laughs> I was like, wow. It's a <laughs> good crazy. problem to have right there. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> Did the, did the mixtape translate to more sales for and one? You know, what's interesting, Corey, is I'm not sure that it helped our brand because, in fact, um, when we launched the mixtape tour and TV show, our sales actually dipped. So they were on the way up, then they dipped, then they kind of came back. I don't know. You could argue, like, we had, you probably don't know this, we had 103 NBA ballplayers well, I didn't wearing know. everyone's shoes when we sold the company in 2005 we had 23 percent of the league wearing our shoes hmm. and, or maybe 33 percent and no one knew it because everyone knew the mixtape tour so we had quickly gone from what we thought of ourselves as an nba performance brand to much more of a you know street ball entertainment brand and i'm not sure that we didn't lose some consumers 
gotcha. uh, in that process. But I'm not sure it would have mattered. Like we wouldn't have been able to stop that train, nor would we have wanted to. 